Uh, let's read real quick. <clears throat> real quick, because uh, we have a lot to cover. But let's read, just so we get an idea. Uh, just the first chapter I'll, I'll read, and you guys can follow. Uh, but it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. The earth was without form and void, and darkness was on the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God was uh, hovering over the face of the waters. Then God said, Let there be light. And there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good. The, and God divided the light from the darkness. God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Then God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Thus God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament, and it was so. And God called the firmament heaven, and so the evening and the morning were the second day. Then God said, Let the waters under the heavens be gathered together into one place, and the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth. And the gathering together of the waters he called seas, and God saw that it was good. Then God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herb that yields seed, and the fruit, that, uh, the fruit tree that yields fruit according to its kind, whose seed is in itself on the earth, and it was so. And the earth brought forth grass, the herb that yields seed uh, according to its kind, and the tree that yields fruit, whose seed is in itself according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the third day. Then God said, let there, be a light, let there be lights in the firmament of the heavens to divide the day from the night, and let them be for signs and seasons and for days and years, and let them be for lights in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth, and it was so. And God made two great lights, the greater light to rule the day and the lesser light to rule the night. He made the stars also. God set them in the firmament of the heavens to give light on the earth and to rule over the day and over the night and to divide the light from the darkness, and God saw, God saw that it was good. So the evening and the morning were the fourth day. Then God said, let the waters abound with an abundance of living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth across the face of the firmament of the heavens. So God created sea, uh, great cre sea creatures and every living thing that moves with which, the, with which the waters abounded, according to their kind, and every winged bird according to its kind, and God saw that it was good. And God blessed them, saying, be, fruit, be fruitful and multiply, and fill the, the waters in the sea, and let birds multiply on the earth. So the evening and the morning were the fifth day. Then God said, let the earth bring forth the living creature according to its kind, cattle and creeping thing, and the beasts of the earth, each according to its kind. And it was so. And God made the beasts of the earth according to its kind, cattle according to its kind, and everything that creeps on the earth according to its kind. And God saw that it was good. Then God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. Let them have dominion. Over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over the cattle, over all the earth, and above every creeping thing that creeps on the earth. So God created man in his own image, in the image of God he created them, or created him male and female he created them. Then God blessed him, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves on the earth. And God said, see, I have given you every herb that yields seed, which is on the face of all the earth, and every tree whose fruit yields seed, to you shall be for food. Also, to every beast of the earth, to every bird of the air, and to every, everything that creeps on the earth in which there is life, I have given every green herb for food, and it was so. Then God saw everything that he had made, and indeed it was very good. So the evening and the morning were the sixth day. <clears throat> So tonight, we're going to be looking at, like I said, the last two days of creation, day five and six, and how life begun. Um, that is, life as God and biblically shows us. And we can probably spend the rest of the year looking at life from a biblical standpoint, but we only have an hour, so we'll see. Uh, let's look really quick um, as we just read through it at the previous days of creation, especially since we will cover two days in, uh, of creation in about an hour. So day one, you have the beginning. That's the beginning of time. The heavens, the beginning of space, the earth, the beginning of matter. Where they were all created suddenly by God. And light was introduced into the heavens and unto the earth. Day two, God makes some structural changes to the universe. Uh, he divides and inserts and expands. Uh, this made the planet ready for life to thrive uh, well beyond of what we have here today. Day three, first he separated the earth from the water and brought uh, land masses, the dry land. Then he ordered the earth to bring forth or sprout grass, herbs, and trees, everything to, 
to reproduce after its kind. So from that moment forward, grass continued to be grass, fruit trees continued to bear fruit. Uh, fig trees give you figs, apple trees give you apples, and grass in your backyard is just that. You're never gonna go out in your backyard and find strawberries, unless one of your kids drop a bunch of strawberries and they grow up, but you know, your lawn does that. Everything continues to be the way and continues to work the way God designed it. Day four, now that the, the planet is in order, God organizes time so that, he can, so that man can understand the passage of time. God designs a timekeeping system, if you may, of signs and seasons and days and years. Uh, God speaks the, the universe into existence and measurable time begins. All of these were 24-hour days. The word that he uses there when he says in, in the evening and the morning were the first day. Every time he uses that, the word is yom. God makes that clear in Exodus chapter 20 when God gives the Ten Commandments to his people. In Exodus chapter 20, verse 9, he says, Six days you shall labor and do all your work. The word there for days is the same word that he uses in Genesis chapter 1. But the seventh day, same word, is the Sabbath of the Lord your God, in it you shall do no work. You, nor your son, nor your daughters, nor your male servants, nor your female servants, nor your cattle, nor your stranger who is within your gates. For in six days, same word, the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the seventh day and hallowed it. He's using the same word, and he's, and he's equating it to a 24-hour day here. He's not saying these were eons and, and thousands or millions of years. 24-hour days. Now, as we're reading through the text, and we were looking through that first, the first six days of creation there, just briefly going through it, you probably notice that God does not do things the way man does. And if you've been a Christian for some time, you know that. God doesn't do the things the way you and I would do things most of the time. And that's why a lot of times we walk around complaining, well, what? Because God does the way God does things. And, he, and he, he makes it clear for us here. He puts it all here for us to see, this is how I did it. Actually, if you have, you know, um, if, if you look at the word, you, 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 for the most part, it's un, you can understand it clearly. God brought plants into the world before the solar system existed. That's a problem, right? I mean, it goes totally against what the world thinks and, and how it happens. You need sunlight for plants to live. And now on the fifth and sixth day, God makes a point about something else that the ruffles the scientific world's feathers, and, and pun intended there. Here on day five, we have the beginning of life. Now, that also becomes an issue, especially today, uh, when man is looking for life all over our solar system and would pretty much qualify anything as life that remotely resembles their idea of life here. And every now and then, they come up as we think we found life, and then nothing. And that has been going on for our, how many years? Still, one thing remains the same. Life is unique to this planet. They haven't found it anywhere else, and I have a pretty good idea that they'll probably never find it anywhere else. Uh, God's pretty clear about that. Man will spend the rest of his or her life or existence looking for life where there is none and miss out on the one who gives them life, both physical, physical life God mentions that in Genesis chapter 2, verse 7, it says, And the Lord God formed men of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the bread of life, and the man became a living being. And he also gives us spiritual life or eternal life. Uh, John 10, 27, it says, My sheep hear my voice. This is Jesus speaking. And I know them, and they follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish. Neither, neither shall anyone snatch them out of my hand. And people need to understand and acknowledge that. The God is the one who gives us life. I'm reminded of one who did not deal with God that way, and then God dealt with him. He was not, uh, back in Daniel chapter 5, Belshazzar, who was Nebuchadnezzar's grandson, he has a, a drunken party one night, and he, he brings the, the vessels of, of, that had been taken from the temple of, of the Lord in Jerusalem, and he has a party, and he, and he drinks out of these vessels, and he, and he, and he toasts to the gods of, of gold and, and silver and bronze and iron. And then this, if you remember, the hand appears uh, 
on the wall and he freaks out. It actually says that his, his knees knocked together. He was so afraid and, and they try to figure out what it is. So they bring Daniel, he interprets and he tells, you know, you've been weighed in the balance and you've been found wanting. Pretty much says, you're going to die. And, and Daniel says to him in Daniel chapter 5, verse 23, um, it says, you have praised the gods of silver and gold, bronze and iron, wood and stone, which do not see or or hear or know, and the God, and he says, and the God who holds your breath in his hands and owns all your ways, you have not glorified. 